The dubs rebounded on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, as after Jonathan Kaminga openly complained about being benched, nine-time world champion Steven Douglas Kerr responded by playing him a team-high 36 minutes, to which JK proved his worth by being a game-high plus 16. While Stephen Curry scored the last 12 points to close the show, like they did against Denver when the Dubs choked an 18-point lead with 7 minutes to go, Golden State led up in the final frame, faltering a 12-2 run to the 3-win Pistons down the stretch. It was fun to watch Curry flip the switch to put Detroit to bed, but Chris Paul suffering a hand fracture, the rotations remaining inconsistent, and the Warriors building up a bad habit of losing focus after getting up big means there's still concerns for Dub Nation. You're gonna wanna stick around. Right quick though, just under 90% of you watching right now are not subscribed, so subscribe if you're in that percentage. Back to the content. The Warriors are tied with the San Antonio Spurs just ahead of the Miami Heat for the most NBA losses, specifically after leading by 17 plus points. Reputable NBA legend in Chuck is already writing the Warriors off, continuing to be very harsh on Golden State. When I said the first night this team is cooked, flashback. I tried to tell you guys, the Warriors are cooked. Later. As I told y'all, this team is cooked. Three days later. This team is cooked. They're not a contender. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. They were cooked and they still are. They're not gonna make the playoffs. Being very, very harsh. Luckily for the culture, a rookie rotation piece like Golden State's Brandon Pajemski is keeping a positive outlook by pondering what could have been. What is the mentality when you are having to deal with this like roller coaster of a season so far? And we're blowing a lot of leads. Could easily have 20, 25 wins this year. That was one of many post-game statements from the rookie this season that have shown this kid is wise beyond his years from a leadership standpoint. Brandon even took responsibility for a loss a few games back, something Clay Thompson called him dramatic for, given Pods is the only one to have made such a statement this year outside of Steph. But in terms of the most recent win as of this recording, with the Pistons missing a chance to take a one-point lead in the clutch, after grabbing this rebound, watch this instant bit of something from nothing shot creation from your rookie point guard under pressure. Pajemski is veteran S and his presence will be that much more crucial in the absence of CP3. Pajemski netted a dime to Wiggins for a three to end the third quarter, then to open the fourth, grabbed a crucial O board, and kicked it out to Clay for the triple. Setting up the Clay three. Unfortunately, almost the same thing happened against Denver in terms of clutch substitutions regarding Trace Jackson Davis against Detroit. Initially, Kerr didn't go to TJD for the final minutes, but was then forced to go back to him when Detroit cut it to a one-point game with 4.20 left. Against Denver the game before, again initially Kerr didn't go back to TJD in the late fourth, but again was forced to when Denver would cut it to a six-point game with 3.20 left. Luckily, unlike in the Nuggets matchup where Trace was then subbed out with a minute left, Davis was left in for the rest of the game against the Pistons. Shedding light on why Steve should trust his rookie big man the ultimate most, Trace's defensive value shows up in the fact that he's tied for the team lead in blocks per game, despite being 10th on the team in minutes per game. Trace dropped 17-6 and six in his debut as a starter against the Mavericks, then dropped 10 points and 2 blocks in his second career start against the Magic. Having been moved back to the bench for the last two though, for the latter in a rematch with their second overall pick from 2020's draft at the center spot in James Wiseman, the Dubs' most recent draft selection at that same position proved he belongs next to several four-time champions. Jackson Davis dropped 11-9 while swatting a shot and going perfect from the field. However, the most impressive frontcourt reserve for Golden State against the Pistons was Dario Saric, whose game-most 17-point night off the pine consisted of personalities weighing deep-range bombs that bailed the offense out while keeping the floor adequately spaced. The Croatian sensation's production hasn't been a big enough storyline for the Warriors, as Saric is third on this team in plus-minus as a plus-66, and through 35 games is shooting a career-best 39.6% from deep-range. With shades of Nemanja Bjelica from 2022's championship equation, up to this point, the minimum contract GM Mike Dunleavy signed Dario for is seeming like a monumental bargain. For Jonathan Kaminga, even after all the drama surrounding the reports about the man not trusting his head coach anymore, the killer from Congo should have a restored faith level in Steve. Buzz JK resembled a new man through and through, bringing the adequate tumultuousness paired with consistency on a one possession to the next basis. Based off the polished moves he's been showcasing as of late, there's still a strong possibility that a universe where Kaminga makes the all-star step comes about. 
For the man he entered the league with in 2021 being Moses Moody, Moody chance from the Chase Center faithful would break out, and they got their wish when Kerr subbed in Moses with just under 10 minutes left in the fourth. You know the rotations are up in the air when a champ from the crowd activates a player, but in all seriousness, it wasn't merely those straight-faced chants, but Based off these signs outside of the arena behind analyst and former warrior Festus Azili, Dub Nation wants their up-and-coming talent developed. Shout out to Corey Joseph for stepping up with Paul's injury as off this baseline out of bounds action, Kaminga's cut through Clay's screen forces the help before Pod spots the Canadian in the corner for a crucial fourth quarter triple that put the dubs up six. How about a Corey Joseph open three? Speaking of Torontonians, next up on the schedule for the Golden State Warriors is a matchup with D Flo's hometown squad in the new look Toronto Raptors, who did just take a close L to Sacramento, but are looking much better off with their new pieces of Emmanuel Quickly and RJ Barrett. So that'll be a tough matchup, especially missing CP, Draymond, and GP2. In terms of the last dub win, while you could say the Warriors did what they were supposed to against the worst team in basketball, the Pistons, only a few games before this, took the league-best Boston Celtics to overtime. Also, on a night where Stephen Curry shot 4 for 12 from deep range, and other than his late flurry, looked off. Plus, taking in you lost Chris Paul on top of the injuries to Green and Peyton the second. All that considered, it was a solid bounce back, albeit with some aforementioned reasons to not get too, too optimistic. What are your score predictions for the Dubs and Raptors on Saturday, though? Best answer gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters with the most shout outs by June 21st earn free NBA merch of their choosing. Today's shout out goes to Kibi Moving, who says, I think Jaime will contribute in the playoffs. He already showing out on nationally televised games. He isn't afraid of the moment. And to add to that take from Kibi, Jaime's four years at UCLA should benefit him in terms of not hitting the rookie wall. But appreciate every take. Deep Flow signing off. The big man set up Steph in the corner. Bottoms of three. Minute 10. One point lead in the ball. Two men jump at Curry. He'll back up a Bogdanovich for three. Up four. Steph, step back three. Got it!